to my channel. Let's look at cell membrane. Cell membrane is the boundary that surrounds the cell. It is also referred to as the plasma membrane or the cytoplasmic membrane, which means the membrane of the cytoplasm. And this is the cell membrane I lighted in black. The cell membrane is a semi-permeable membrane in the sense that it allows small molecules to pass through it, while bigger molecules are prevented from passing through it. And when the need arises and they have to pass through, they are being transported through membrane protein. We'll get to membrane protein during the course of this lecture to see how they are able to participate in the process of transporting structures to and fro the cytoplasm. The functions of the cell membrane include that they form a border between the intracellular compartment and the extracellular compartment. This is the intracellular space or compartment, which is the region that is enclosed within the cell, while we have the extracellular compartment as the region that is seen outside the cell. So it tends to separate these two compartments and create like a demarcation between them. Then it also helps to prevent cell against invasion or attack. It tends to give a protective covering to the cell, thereby preventing harmful structures or structures that are not needed by the cell to attack it or invade it. It also helps to control movement to and fro the cytoplasm. This is the intracellular compartment, as we've said, and this is the extracellular compartment. So it tends to like control the rate at which molecules move across the cell so that molecules are not just moving to and fro as they wish, but are being controlled under specific mechanism. They're also involved in a number of cellular processes, which include cell adhesion. Cell adhesion is the process through which cells form contact with each other. And this is seen around this region. So cell is able to link with another cell to form a lining. And this is seen mostly in epithelium, where they are seen to be lining the interiors of cavities or lining surfaces. You can go through our lecture on the epithelium to upgrade your knowledge in this regard. So cells are able to form contact with each other through no other means except the cell membrane. So it is through the cell membrane brain that they are able to link up with a neighboring cell to form lining that is seen in epithelium. They are also involved in the process of endocytosis. We've said that endocytosis is a process that the cell undergoes in order to be able to take in substances into their cytoplasm. And this is described through this image where this molecule is seen in the extracellular compartment and is needed to be taken into the intracellular compartment. So this process is called endocytosis. And of course, this process will not occur in any region of the cell except through the cell membrane. Also, the process of exocytosis, which is displayed here, where structures are taken out of the intracellular compartment. Also, the cell membrane is responsible for this process and also cell signaling and some other cellular processes. Let's look at the morphology of the cell membrane. We see the cell membrane as a thin line that forms a border around the cell. But this cell membrane is more than what we see. If you look at it in a more detailed view, this is the kind of presentation that we would see. If you look at it, you see that it's made up of phospholipid bilayer. It means two layers of phospholipid. It is made up of phospholipid molecules. And this is what the molecules look like. You have the head region. The head region of the phospholipid molecule is made up of the phosphate. It's attached with two tails. And these are the two tails. And these two tails are the lipid unit of the phospholipid molecules. So this is the kind of presentation that they present. You have the head and you have two tails. This is to form a lining of the cell membrane. And because we say they are bilayer, it means they are two layers. So you see this kind of configuration in two layered pattern. So you see one on the outside and you see one on the inside. And we've said that each of the phospholipid is made up of the head, and this is the head. And of course, it's made up of the tail. And they have two tails, and this is the tail. The head region is known as the hydrophilic hand. This hand is a polar hand, which means that it is soluble in water, so they tend to be attracted to water. Why the tail region is known as the hydrophobic hand. And this hydrophobic hand are non-polar, which means that they are insoluble in water. 
because we already said that they are the lipid end and this lipid is like oil so it's not soluble in water they have specific pattern by which they are arranged let's look through this we say we have the head region and the tail region that's the hydrophilic end and the hydrophobic end so you have the two hydrophilic end pointing to the opposite direction we already said that they are bilayer which means that they are two layer of phospholipid so you have the tail region forming contact with each other Why the head region are at the opposite end. So this is the pattern by which they are arranged. And they are arranging this pattern to suit the processes around the cell. We know that this is the intracellular compartment and this is the extracellular compartment. In the intracellular compartment, we have water molecules. In the extracellular compartment, we also have water molecules. And we've said that the hydrophilic end, which is the head region, is polar, then it's soluble in water. So it tends to be associated with water. So the pattern is already aligning with what is going to be presented around the different regions of the cell, both in the intracellular region and also in the extracellular region. In the middle, we have the hydrophobic end, which is the non-polar region, and this is the tail region. And this region is not soluble in water. It does not associate with water molecule. They do not blend. So it is already programmed for the kind of presentation that will be seen in the cellular environment. Let's drive in into the cell membrane proteins. Along the cell membrane, we have proteins that are embedded within the cell membrane. And what this protein does is to enhance movement across the cell membrane. This is the cell membrane protein. This is another cell membrane protein. You can see them they are embedded within the cell membrane. So apart from this cell membrane protein, allowing or enhancing movement of molecules to and fro the cell membrane, they are also involved in cellular adhesion processes. They, it is through this protein that another cell is able to form contact with this cell. And this tends to signal cell identification or interaction to interact with the neighboring cell. Types of membrane protein. We have two types of membrane proteins. We have the integral membrane proteins. The integral membrane proteins are permanently attached to the cell membrane. So they form the structural framework of the cell membrane. An example of this type of proteins are the transmembrane proteins. This is the transmembrane protein. The transmembrane protein, you can see it running through the entire length of the cell membrane. So they span through the entire length of the cell membrane, taking structures to and fro the intracellular and the extracellular compartments. While we have the other type of integral membrane proteins, which is referred to as the bitopic proteins. This protein are seen at just one hand of the phospholipid bilayer. So they do not span through like the transmembrane protein, then the second type of cell membrane protein that we have are the peripheral membrane proteins. These are basically involved in cell signaling or cellular attachment. This kind of cell membrane proteins are temporarily attached to the cell membrane. They are not like the integral membrane proteins that are permanent. And this is where you see them. You see them at the peripheral region. You may also see them attached to the integral membrane proteins like the transmembrane proteins. So you see them over them like a cap. So thanks for watching. Let's meet again.